If I think about all four of these things in merchandising my ad account, that I won't just display products for sale in a creative way that entices the customer to buy. Instead, I'll be able to display products for sale in a creative way that entices the customer to buy what I want them to buy. We're back trying to do a drawing a week for you all. And today we're talking about an old school term that we're bringing back into the new age, merchandising your ad account. Merchandising is a phrase that we don't hear much in the D2C or e-commerce world that traditionally is thought of as a retail uh, methodology, but we're gonna talk about how it applies to your ad account. To start, let's define the term. Merchandising is the process of displaying products for sale in a creative way that entices the customer to buy. Here's our example that we all want you to think about. Retail store window. A merchandiser has to make a choice about what they're displaying in this window and why. And so a great merchandiser, someone who does this job incredibly well, has a strategic process for deciding which products they are going to display. They are not going to simply let the customer choose anything that they want because they understand intimately which products produce the best outcomes for the business. Think about the way your grocery store is set up. Eggs and milk in the back, high margin products in the front. They make you walk past all the better products to get to the commodities that don't offer much margin. Okay, so the question is, how do we think about our ad account as a retail store window for our website? The modern store window is the Facebook newsfeed, the Instagram newsfeed, and it's our job as advertisers to be thoughtful about what we put in the window and how it attracts customers to our website with intention to buy. So this four-step process will help you become a better merchandiser of your ad account. Step number one has to do with budget. We must begin by thinking about what, how many different things can we display, okay? Think of this as the size of your store window, how many products you get the opportunity to show the customer. This is the limiting constraint. The container in which we make all of these other decisions starts with how much budget I have. And what I'll tell you is that for many of you, especially with smaller budgets, the number of options that you have to show is actually fewer than you think. You have to be even more thoughtful and more intentional about the offers that you're displaying because we know that it takes something like 50 purchases per week to get out of the learning phase per ad set. So for every product or offer that you want to display, you have to be able to afford at least 50 purchases. Now, if you have millions of dollars in your budget, you can have a broader array, but we never want to leave the decision of the allocation or budget simply to Facebook's sort of algorithm. I see in many cases, brands making the choice to set up DABA or dynamic audiences, broad to, or dynamic ads, broad audiences, and just simply allow Facebook to deliver all of their products at their discretion on lowest cost bidding. Well, what happens in that case? You often deliver to lower value, lower margin products. So we must begin with a consideration of budget. How many things do we get the choice to sell? Then from there, a great merchandiser must have a consideration for the calendar. Our marketing calendar frames up the second critical point of consideration for what we are displaying in the ad account. Because at any given moment, the most impactful answer to this question is always going to be the things that align and create an imperative for purchase in the, in the moment. Things like product releases, promotions, and cultural events will have the greatest impact in aligning our offer and product to the expectation behavior of the customer. Again, think of this as which products we display in the winter versus the summer which products we display when we have a new product release versus an evergreen product, which products we display when there's a sale or ads we display when there's a sale. And again, all the products that we would consider pivot on the basis of the marketing calendar. And I want you to think a lot about this idea of expected conversion rate. The way that you win in an ad account and drive disproportionate return is you drive unanticipated by Facebook increase in your expected conversion rate such that you're either arbitraging the CPM bid that they're making, or you're allowing Facebook to be more aggressive in their bid to produce more volume. 
And you do that by creating an imperative for purchase around moments. So first, define the budget. Second, ask yourself, do I have any moments around product release, promotion, or cultural events? And when I say cultural events, I mean things like back to school, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, that would drive an imperative for purchase that would produce outsides of returns. Number three, that is that if, if there are no calendar moments that are going to drive the answer to what you merchandise in your store window or your ad account, then we have to have a consideration for evergreen. And our evergreen decisions about offers and products lies at the center of these four concentric circles. They are number one, volume, a consideration for what are your best selling products, the things that we know customers have proven they have a demand for. Number two, what are your highest margin products? Which ones make you the most money when you sell them? Number three, LTV, which products when purchased produce an outsized lifetime value of a customer based on that purchase? An easy example here in many brands is the distinction between male products and female focused products, especially in apparel, produce outsized or major differences in lifetime value. And then finally, a consideration for the asset library that you have to promote each product. And at the center of these overlapping circles, this point right here are the products and offers that you want to focus on. Your highest volume SKUs with the best margin, the best LTV, and the best asset library. That's the third consideration. What's my budget determines how many. I start then with the imperative moments that drive the calendar. That's my first consideration. The second is the overlap of these four concentric circles. And then finally, it has to do with my ideas and what we call the creative pyramid or creative triangle. The creative triangle is three points that every campaign must contain. Number one is the offer. How compelling is the offer? And that's going to either be designed by my calendar or my product consideration. Then there's a question of the audience. Okay. Who are they? How clearly is this product built for them? How large is that audience? And then how compelling is my angle to that audience? So, and if I want to make the best decision about what I'm going to display in my ad account, I have to think about how many things I get to display, what are the most pressing moments that I can drive to, which products produce, produce the best business outcomes, and which of these products or offers has the clearest audience and the most obvious angle to drive advertising success and create a strategy. If I think about all four of these things in merchandising my ad account, that I won't just display products for sale in a creative way that entices the customer to buy. Instead, I'll be able to display products for sale in a creative way that entices the customer to buy what I want them to buy. And a great merchandiser, purchase don't, purchases don't happen to them. They make purchases happen on the basis of what purchase will generate the best business outcome. Take these four ideas and apply them in thinking through what you are showing in your online store window.